Hello everyone, welcome again to Talent Sprint for another video presentation from me. Uh, this time we are going to see uh, what are the various development programs offered in India by the government. Uh, we uh, will see various development programs. Of course, we will not be able to cover each and every development program because there are more than 200 of them. What we will do is basically look at some of the important ones. The ministries of the government of India have come up with various useful schemes from time to time. The schemes could be either central, state-specific, or joint collaboration between the center and the states, which means that there could be a national program which is announced by the central government, which is implemented by the central government also, or it could be a state-specific program, but which is sponsored by the central government, or it could be a state-specific program uh, sponsored by the state government, or it could be a combination of all the three. That is the essence of the uh, development programs in India. We should look at some of the important ones. As I told you, more than 200 to 212 uh, uh, development programs have been announced in the country right from the year 1954 till the year 2017. So it will be well uh, impossible to discuss each one of them in this uh, uh, video presentation. What, however, we shall do is to, uh, is to look at some of the very important ones which have garnered a lot of success and a lot of attention too. First, we start with the Central Government Health Scheme or the CGHS. Central Government Health Scheme is a, is a, a scheme sponsored by the uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This is the oldest development program in India. This was started in the year 1954. It the objective is to provide comprehensive medical care facilities to central government employees, uh, pensioners and their dependents living in CHS, CG, CH, uh, sorry, CGHS approved cities. Basically, it's a scheme for the central government employees, employees both serving and retired and their families dependent on them. It's a, it's a scheme for providing comprehensive health care to the people working in the central government departments, uh, various central government departments and their dependents, not only during their employment but also post-retirement. However, this facility is not available in all the cities of the country. There are certain cities which are known as uh, CGHS approved cities and these cities will offer this free medical health care to the people who have been working in the central government departments or who have retired from the uh, central government department. As I told you, this is the oldest development program announced by the government of India way back in 1954, which is just seven years after our independence. There are 27 cities approved by the government under this scheme. There are 27 cities which have been approved by the government under this scheme and these 27 cities are spread over various uh, uh, states in the country. Obviously, it does not cover the entire country. Obviously, when only 27 cities are uh, there, it does not cover the entire uh, country as such. But the redeeming feature of this central government uh, health scheme is that an employee can actually avail of the uh, benefits under this health care scheme even until his last day. That is the beauty of this. It does not stop. Uh, there are a lot of uh, private sector companies which offer healthcare facilities to their employees, but the moment the employees leave the organization, either due to retirement or due to resignation, that facility stops, that, that healthcare facility is no more available to the employee. Whereas under this uh, central government health scheme, the employee gets this benefit not only during his lifetime, not only for himself, but also his dependents. His dependents could include the wife, the son, and an unmarried daughter, a son who is not yet employed. All these are, are, are classified as uh, uh, dependent people. So not only for him, but also for his uh, dependents, this scheme is available to the employee and his family, not only during the service of the uh, employee, but also even well after his retirement, till his last day. And that is the beauty of this scheme. This scheme is hugely popular amongst all the central government employees because this scheme comes practically free of cost, except for some small incidental expenses which the employee has to bear. Otherwise, it comes practi practically free of cost and covers a wide range of uh, 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 illnesses, including hospitalization. So, uh, including hospitalization benefits, including maternity benefits, all this is covered by the CGHS scheme. That's the beauty of this scheme. It's a hugely popular scheme, as I told you. And this is the oldest uh, development program announced by the central government of India way back in 1954. So this, uh, uh, this introduction about CGHS 
marks the end of this video presentation. It's a very short presentation. Uh, until I see you again in the next video, it is bye from me for now. Thanks for watching and please continue to keep watching Talent Sprint videos. Thank you very much. Hello well, and welcome to Talent Sprint again for another video presentation on uh, uh, the development programs available in the country. We, are, we have seen what is the central government scheme. Now we look at what is an integrated child development scheme, the ICDS. The ICDS provides food, preschool education and primary health care to children under the age of six years of age and their, mem and their mothers. Pro uh, the ICDS program provides food, preschool education and primary health care to children under the age of six years and their mothers. This scheme was announced and launched on the 2nd of October 1975, uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, 2nd October, the scheme was launched by the union government. We now move on to the next scheme, which is the Integrated Rural Development Program, IRDP. IRDP is again a very, very popular development program announced by the central government. IRDP is a central government program launched in the year 1978. That's about um, uh, uh, almost uh, 40 years back, 1978. It's a self-employment program intended to raise the income generation capacity of target groups amongst the poor. The program is basically for poor people. This program aims at uh, improving the standards of living and improving the en income generation capacity of the uh, people in the rural, uh, in the, in, in the, amongst the poor sections of the society. Uh, let me clarify, IRDP is not a rural uh, centric program. This covers even urban poor. So it's a self-employment program. The idea is to generate income generate uh, the idea is to generate income for the uh, for the um, uh, poor people and the idea is to generate income through self generation or self income uh, or self employment opportunities that is the idea of the irdp program the target group consists largely of small and marginal farmers agricultural laborers and rural artisans living below the poverty line the idea is to help the small and marginal farmers, agricultural laborers, and uh, uh, the rural artisans, those who are living below the poverty line, to raise their level of income generation so that they come above the poverty line. That is why it is called the Integrated Rural Development Program. I stand corrected. It is not for the urban poor. It is only for the rural poor. It is only for the rural poor. It is meant for uh, generating, in, uh, generating income generation activities for the rural poor by giving them opportunities for self-employment. The target audience is mainly agricultural laborers, small and marginal farmers, landless laborers, and the rural artisans living below the poverty line. That's the crux of the uh, matter. They should be living below the poverty line. So that, that is, uh, in a nutshell, about the uh, ICDS and the IRDP. Uh, I deliberately want to keep these videos short so that uh, you can absorb the things better. So that's the reason why these videos are all short and uh, uh, they, you should be able to grasp uh, things better. So we have seen now three schemes in all. We have seen what is the central government health scheme launched in 1954. We have seen what is the uh, integrated child development scheme launched in 1975. And now we have seen what is the IRDP or the Integrated Rural Development Program launched in the year 1978. And this concludes this video presentation. Thanks for watching. And I will see you again with another video on a development program very soon. Until then, it's bye from me for now. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint again. We are continuing our discussion on the uh, development programs available in the country today and uh, we are now moving on to the next development program which is the Jawaharlal see which is the Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission or the JNNURM is a very popular scheme Jawaharlal Nehru National uh, Urban Renewal Mission that is the name of the scheme JNNURM, which is you can see in a lot of buses running in various towns and cities with the words J uh, with the letters J N N U R M being painted on them. J N N U R M is a massive city modernization scheme launched by the government of India under the Ministry of Urban Development. This is a massive city urbanization scheme or city modernization scheme, I'm sorry. This is a city modernization scheme launched by the government of India under the Ministry of Urban Development. Jawaharlal Nehru 
National Urban Renewal Mission, J W N U R M. It's uh, it's meant mainly for the cities and towns. It's not meant for uh, rural villages. It's aimed at modernizing the towns and uh, uh, cities uh, under the Ministry of Urban Development. It was launched on the 3rd of uh, December 2005. The scheme was launched on the 3rd of December 2005. That's about 12 years back. Uh, this program, the objective of the program is to improve the quality of life and infrastructure in the cities. The quality of life and infrastructure, that is the basic point. The infrastructure, that is why you see all the buses uh, painted or a lot of buses painted under the, with the letters J, W, N, U, R, M. Uh, bus, tra bus transport is obviously one of the key areas of infrastructure development uh, in the cities. And that's the reason why you have uh, the buses being covered under the uh, J, N, N, U, R, M scheme. It's a, it's a program meant to improve the quality of life in the uh, cities and basically the thrust, is on, uh, the thrust is on infrastructure development. It has envisaged a total investment of $20 billion over the seven year period. It was launched in 2005, so over the seven year period it envisaged a total investment of over $20 billion towards improving the infrastructure in the uh, cities and towns, in the urban areas of the country. So that is about uh, J-N-U-R-M. It's a, it's a very popular scheme. You, you, as I told you, it's a very visible scheme because of the infrastructure development projects associated with the scheme. And one of the key infrastructure development projects which have been associated with the scheme are the uh, uh, development of uh, the bus transport. A lot of buses, including air-conditioned buses, were bought by the various state uh, transport corporations uh, under the uh, JN and URM scheme. You find them all across the uh, all across the country in every major city and town. Uh, so that's uh, that's it for the JN and URM scheme. Uh, I will see you again in the next video with some other uh, topic uh, on the development program. Until then, thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Talents Meet again. We are continuing our discussion on the uh, development programs available in the country. Now we turn our attention to one of the uh, more popular and a little bit uh, uh, controversial scheme, if I may use the word, because of the debate it has generated amongst the various circles of the society in recent times, and that is the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act or in short MGNREG. MGNREG is a very popular scheme amongst the masses but unfortunately it has also generated quite a bit of debate amongst the masses. I will tell you the reason why uh, but let's understand this is a scheme uh, intended for the rural employment guarantee. It's, it's basically an in, a scheme intended for guaranteeing employment to the rural people and this was launched on the 2nd of February 2006. MGNRES -E or MGNRGS uh, was uh, MGNREGS, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. This was uh, launched on the third of uh, on the second of February two thousand six, and this is the largest and the most ambitious social security and public works program in the world. This has been tooted as the largest and the most ambitious public works and social security program in the world initiated with the objective of enhancing livelihood security in the rural areas by providing at least a hundred days of guaranteed wage employment in a financial year to every household this was what generated a lot of uh, controversy because uh, uh, they were saying that they will provide at least hundred days of guaranteed wage employment in a financial year to every household in the rural areas. Again, it is meant for rural people. It is not meant for the urban people. Uh, uh, this scheme was launched with the objective of enhancing the livelihood of, of the uh, enhancing the livelihood security. That's again another important uh, point to note. It is enhancing livelihood security, which means that the rural poor were always feeling very insecure. They were feeling very insecure about themselves because farming was not keeping up to their requirements and they were feeling uh, very insecure about their livelihood. So the government launched a scheme in 2006 to enhance their uh, security of their livelihood. And how did they do it? By guaranteeing at least 100 days of employment to every household during a financial year. 
that is the most important thing they guaranteed a hundred days of employment during a financial year which means that uh, in a month almost they will be employed at least for eight to nine days now why did this generate controversy that is what also to be seen why did this generate controversy is because the other section of the society felt that with a minimum guaranteed uh, uh, wage coming to them for these hundred days in a financial year the people who were uh, earlier working for the farming as a livelihood ditched their farming and came to this uh, mg n r e g s so because of which agricultural labor became agricultural labor became short in supply anyway they used to get uh, 100 rupees per day for 8 uh, days in a month which is almost 800 to 900 rupees 8 to 9 days in a month which is almost 8 to 9 days in a in a, uh, uh, in a month which is almost 8 to 900 rupees in a month and uh, they could uh, actually uh, live very comfortably with their 800 or 900 that's what they thought and uh, the because of their thinking because of the fact that they had a guaranteed employment for 8 uh, to 9 days in a month or 100 days in a financial year the people took it easy and they were not going back to the farms moreover the uh, kind of work which they were assigned under this scheme was very very easy to do it was not hard agricultural labor as they were used to doing in the fields so which means that they preferred this employment over the agricultural labor that is why it generated a lot of uh, uh, heat and controversy so uh, that is the reason why this ng uh, uh, n r e g s uh, generated a lot of controversy but however uh, the the scheme is being still continued and uh, more and more people are uh, coming into the scheme uh, but the government has also been telling the people that look here we are only going to give you uh, uh, guaranteed employment for 8 to 9 days in a month the remaining you please spend on your farms spend on your fields agricultural fields and slowly but steadily the realization is dawning on the agricultural laborers that uh, getting an employment for 8 to 9 days in a month will not be sufficient for them so they are slowly turning back to their agricultural fields as well so this is an introduction to the scheme a very popular but a little bit uh, debatable scheme also so that concludes this presentation on this scheme uh, i will see you again with a, uh, the next video on another development program until then uh, is bye from me for now thanks for watching hello and welcome again to talent sprint we are continuing our video discussion on the various development schemes launched by the government of india and the various uh, state governments from time to time uh, we have seen uh, at least five schemes so far now we go on to the next scheme which is the midday meal scheme the midday meal scheme again is a very very popular initiative by the government of india uh, even before the government of india launched certain state governments had launched a midday meal scheme in fact uh, i remember the state of tamil nadu launched this midday meal scheme as early as 1969 uh, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, central government also followed suit the midday meal scheme is a school meal program of the government of india designed to improve the nutritional status of school going children the idea is that the school going children must get nutritious food and that's the reason why uh, this scheme was introduced by the government of india most of the school going children especially amongst the poor sections of the society were not getting uh, uh, enough nutrition in their food and so the government thought it their responsibility to uh, provide nutritious food to the uh, school going children and that's the reason this uh, this scheme was launched and this scheme was launched in 1995 i told you this scheme followed suit of uh, uh, some of the state government schemes which were launched way back in 1969 tamil nadu is an example where they launched the midday meal scheme uh, way back in 1969 the uh, tamil nadu is an example where they launched the midday meal scheme way back in 1969 and the central government followed suit in 1995 and the program supplies free lunch to the school going children on working days uh, for children in primary and upper primary classes in government government aided and local body schools let's uh, let's uh, uh, understand it very clear that this program does not give free lunch to students in private schools it provides lunch only to students in government schools or government aided schools or local body schools and to whom does it provide it provides nutritious meals to the primary and upper primary class students only not the secondary and the higher secondary class students 
So that is another uh, 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 differentiating factor in the sense that uh, uh, the scheme does not cover the higher and higher secondary schools. It covers only the primary and upper primary classes and it, it gives uh, uh, aid or it gives the lunch to only the, the uh, children in the uh, government schools or the government aided schools or the local body schools. The scheme envisaged a, a providing of one egg a day to the uh, children under the nutritious meal program. It was uh, thought uh, to be very ambitious at the time of launch, but however, it has uh, seen the light of the day and the children are indeed enjoying the uh, midday meal scheme as announced by the uh, government of India. So that is the rundown on the midday meal scheme. Uh, we will go to the next uh, scheme in the following video. Uh, until then, it's thanks for me. Uh, thanks from me for now. Thanks for watching.